What's up guys, Adam Saxon, AKA Guy in a Cube. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I've got another roundup for you, so let's dig in. First up is a blog post from Matt Allington, where he looks at how to use Power Query to compare rows within your data set. He talks about that there are different options for doing this. You can do it with Power Query, you can do it with Power Pivot. You could actually do it in your backend data source if you wanted to. But he also mentions, and I agree with him, that there are a lot of different ways to do this. You really need to pick the situation that fits the scenario that you're dealing with. In his example, he used Power Query to do this, and he walks through how he did it. I don't wanna give the secret away, I want you to read the article. He actually went through it in a video as well that's embedded into the blog post. So be sure to check that out and let him know what you think. Chris Webb's got a blog post where he looks at how to use Profiler to determine which calculations being evaluated from an analysis services perspective. This is looking at multidimensional and this is actually part two of his series. Part one, he talked about how you could do this. Part two is actually a real world example where he looks at a date tool dimension, which you may be using, and looks through, walks through like how to actually determine that. There's a great blog post if you've ever wondered about that or if you think that your calculations may be causing performance issues for you. So be sure to check out this blog post. We had a blog post that went through the January updates for the Power BI service. And this blog post lists out a lot of the features that were released in January, some of which were the actual Power BI admin role. So that's available now. You can do that from the UI or you can set that from a PowerShell perspective. And that allows you the ability to designate someone in your organization as a Power BI administrator. They'll get access to the Power BI admin role without being a global admin of your tenant. So that's big win. We also announced that Power BI auditing is now globally available. It's still in preview, but it is now available for all regions. And I know I've been pinged a lot from people asking, when's it gonna be available in Europe? When's it gonna be available in Australia? It is now available, so be sure to go check that out. We also announced a new feature regarding email subscriptions. So that's in preview now. If you haven't used it, be sure to check it out so you can get emailed when items change. There were several other items that were listed in this blog post, so be sure to go check it out and see all the new items that came in January. We announced a new feature for the Power BI mobile app, and that is that you can use Q&A with the mobile app on iOS devices. There's a lot of buzz on Twitter about this. Q&A is a powerful tool, and it's great to use in the service, and it's awesome now that you can use that directly on your device if you're using iOS. So if you haven't checked it out, be sure that your app is updated to the latest release, and then give it a try. Hot off the press, we've got a new release for Power BI Desktop. This is the February update, and there were a bunch of items in this update. From a report view perspective, you can now word wrap on matrix row headers. You can adjust the line thickness on line charts. You can also adjust the font size for X and Y axes. From an analytics side of things, you can now do two new quick calcs. So you can do a percentage of row total and a percentage of column total. From the data connectivity side of things, there were several updates. One of those was the ability to use a Power App Common Data Service Connector. So that's pretty cool. From a query perspective, there was also an update to allow you to insert steps into your existing queries. And this is just a list of some of the items. So be sure to check out this blog post to see all of the items in this update and to check out the videos as well to give you ideas for how to use these items. Okay, let me know which item was your favorite. Go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. Also check the description for all of the links to the items I talked about, along with some bonus links. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.